imaging and molecular imaging in particular has uh, over the many years uh, been focused on a variety of biology from looking at uh, biology in vivo to the study of disease in vivo and um, these applications include in, in neuroscience, cardiology and more and more so in cancer biology and nowadays in immunotherapy. The Crump Institute and the Preclinical Imaging Technology Center along with its partner in the Cyclotron Radiochemistry Technology Center work very intimately with each other to collaborate with our researchers who would like to use these technologies to answer their important biomedical questions. And the environment that we have here makes that both very easy uh, to do and also the technology is being very accessible. The physical location is, is very important because essentially you're right in the middle of uh, all the students, all the research programs, you know, we're basically rubbing uh, at the interface of the, of the different disciplines. It's also housed in the California Nanosystems Institute, um, which was created to leverage public funds together with uh, private investments uh, in order to uh, translate discoveries at UCLA into uh, commercial entities that actually will be available to the public. We get the questions and then we try to find answers to the questions. And how to answer those questions are through the tools and the technologies that we develop here. My lab at the Crump Institute for Molecular Imaging is a fluorine chemistry lab. And our goal is to simplify access to fluorine 18 labeled PET probes. We work on developing synthetic methods to install fluorine 18 radionuclide on a small molecule and also on larger molecules. So one of the methods that we've developed in my lab is to synthesize fluorine 18 labeled arenes, which is a common um, chemical motif in small molecule pet probes. And more recently in my lab, we've developed synthetic methods to label peptides. Um, we're very interested in labeling peptides with fluorine 18, and we have developed a small radiosynthon that will enable fluoride 18 labeling of peptides via a thioether linkage. Through our partnership with the UCLA Cancer Center, we are providing you subsidized access to a world-class molecular imaging facility with leading-edge and state-of-the-art equipment, as well as to staff with an enormous breadth and depth of experience in utilizing these technologies to extract the maximum possible information. One of the things we're really excited about is um, labeling peptides for theranostics. And it's becoming um, a really exciting um, field, and it's already been um, used for imaging and treating prostate cancer. You know, I think that's kind of the future of, of where my chemistry might go as well, is, is um, developing methods for peptides that could be used in a theragnostic application. Another technology we've been exploring is the use of microfluidics in radiochemistry. So microfluidic devices are designed to handle very small volumes of liquid um, for different applications such as chemical synthesis. Uh, so we developed microfluidic devices that can perform uh, the radiochemical reactions to synthesize an imaging probe in 1 to 10 microliter volumes. And this is in comparison to the milliliter volumes of traditional radiochemistry. Um, so by shrinking the volume a hundredfold or a thousandfold, we're able to significantly reduce the cost of reagents that are needed um, to produce those probes. And we can also speed up the production of the PET probes and then implement the whole system in a, in a very compact system that has uh, important implications for uh, the operation of, of radiochemistry labs. For students this is an invaluable experience because they learn a project from the beginning till the end. So they come in as young trainees but then they can come with an idea and then cre can create something from the ground up all the way to, and to see its implementation. And I think it's one of the most great gratifying things to see your design, your solution to a problem being used and implemented by somebody else. Uh, then leading to publications, leading to this new discoveries. With the developments in technologies that are allowing us to have more information from the genomic and the proteomic side, um, that allows more targets and biomarkers to be identified. And in turn, that allows us to develop new uh, assays to see that biology and see those biomarkers at play in the body. These in vivo assays allow us to look at, for example, in drug development, the pharmacokinetics of the drug's biodistribution in the body 
and also used as uh, assays of pharmacodynamics, which is the effect of these drugs on the body. How efficacious are these drugs uh, to, for example, uh, eradicating tumor cells? With this potential of molecular imaging to advance um, both personalized medicine and these emerging uh, immunotherapies, uh, molecular imaging is really poised to have a tremendous impact in the field of uh, medicine as a whole.